Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be going over how to set up your PC to improve performance and visual clarity in Hell Let Loose. The first thing we want to do is you want to open up your browser and go to your monitors manufacturer's webpage. And what we're going to do is we're going to be installing the driver for your monitor. This is important just to resolve any issues that might arise from the Windows default driver that installs when you hook up your screen for the first time. So for me, I'm just going to click Support. I'm going to click Driver and Utility. Select my operating system. And right here is my driver package. You download your driver, save. This will be saved in your Downloads folder. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the desktop and we are going to select Display Settings. From here, we're going to scroll down and we are going to click on Advanced Display Settings. We're going to select the proper monitor. And then we are going to click Display Adapter Properties. From here, we're going to select Monitor, Properties, Driver, and Update Driver. Now, my driver is already installed, so when we go through this, the prompts may be a little different. For me, it's just going to tell me I have the best driver already installed. So we're going to click Browse My Computer for Drivers. We're going to browse, select your driver in your Downloads folder. We're going to hit OK. We're going to hit Next. Yours will install. Mine already tells me it's already been installed. All right. The reason we do this is to eliminate any default Windows monitor driver that is installed, which you know could potentially cause conflicts with the performance of your PC. So now that that's done, we're going to close and confirm and make sure you select your refresh rate is the proper refresh rate for your monitor. Mine is 165. We're going to hit apply and we'll hit OK. We're going to close this window and we are going to go to the start menu and we are going to type game mode settings. Once we select Game Mode Settings, we're going to make sure Game Mode is turned off. Game Mode is supposed to prioritize your game, but it does conflict with a lot of games, and Hell Let Loose is one of those. So make sure that is off. Next, we're going to select Xbox Game Bar. We're going to also make sure that Game Bar is off. Next, we're going to go select Graphic Settings on the top right up here. And we are going to make sure Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling is off. This feature isn't in full implementation yet, and it really serves to benefit gamers with high-end GPUs, such as a 2080 or 3080 or so on. Turning this off lets your CPU do the scheduling. This is something you can test for yourself and see what works for you. Next, we're going to turn on variable refresh rate. This is one you can experiment with too. I didn't notice a difference, so use what's best for you. I'm just going to leave this on. Next, we're going to go down. I already have it selected, but you won't see this here. But we are going to select Browse. And when the window pops up, you are going to select where your Hell Let Loose install file is. So for me, it's going to be Program Files x86, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Hell Let Loose, and we're simply going to select the Hell Let Loose EXE. Mine's already selected. You'll just hit Add. Once you've added that, it'll show up right here. And what we're going to do here is we're going to left-click on it. We are going to hit Options. We are going to select High Performance. This is going to force Windows into using a high priority mode. We'll hit save and we can X out of there. Uh, one important note is that Hell Let Loose must be started from inside of Steam um, as we selected the HLL.exe in the Steam folder. Once you select Hardware Accelerated GPU, it'll notify you that you need to restart your PC. You can go ahead and do that now. And when you restart, we will return back to some more modifications. 
All right. So after your PC is restarted, we are going to right click on the desktop and we are going to select NVIDIA control panel. If you use an AMD, your settings might be a little different, um, but follow along as best you can. All right. So first things first, we're going to select manage 3D settings. These settings are much different than I had been using in update eight. For update seven and eight, I had everything turned off, as much stuff off as I possibly could. Um, and then relied on modifying the engine.ini to deal with the anti-aliasing issue. Um, so, but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna be forcing the graphics card to clean up the image and hell let loose. Uh, we can all agree that it's grainy and doesn't look as nice as Update 8, even though the graphics quality is better. Um, the graininess still exists, and we want to be able to see our enemies in the distance very clearly. So some of your settings, again, may be different if you're using an AMD card, and some of your settings may be in a different order than mine are. Try to follow along based on the name. All right, so we are going to go through every one of these settings. For image sharpening, I'm using a sharpen of 1.0 and ignore film grain of 1.0. This is pretty self-explanatory. Ignoring fil film grain is going to decrease that film grain. Ambient occlusion is off. I hate this word as most people do, but aniso anisotropic filtering, 16x. This is going to add super clean lines to everything in the game. It is one of the most notable features you could turn on as far as editing your 3D settings. FXAA, some people like this on, I can't stand it, so I keep it off. Camera correction, we are going to turn on. Anti-aliasing mode is application controlled. Anti-aliasing transparency is off. Background application max frame rate, this is important. This won't affect OBS if you're recording at, let's say, 60 frames a second, but it will force everything behind the scenes to not run at an uncapped frame rate. Next, we're going to uh, make sure CUDA GPUs, we want all. DSR factors off. DSR smoothness is off. Low latency mode, I prefer to use ultra. Um, you're free to test these settings. Uh, mine says on and then off. Ultra is noticeable for me, so I keep it off. Max frame rate, I'm using a G-Sync monitor, so I want the monitor to be able to go as high as you want, or as high as it wants. And then in the Steam launch options, I have one of the modifiers set to limit that to my monitor's refresh rate. Moving on, monitor technology, obviously I'm using a G-Sync compatible screen, MFAA, I can't stand, so keep that off. OpenGL rendering, just select your graphics card here. Power management mode, prefer maximum performance. Preferred refresh rate, highest available. Shader cache on, that if you don't have that on, then every time you load the game, you're having to reload your shader cache, and that can introduce its own kind of glitchiness every time you start the game. Texture filtering, anisotropic sample option, turn that off. Negative LOD bias, we are going to clamp. And if you read down here, you'll see what that does. When it's enabled, you will get better image quality by clamping. Um, higher performance, I didn't see higher performance with this off, so I'm leaving it on. Texture filtering quality, a lot of people will tell you to run this at high performance. But again, we're trying to clean up the game, so change this to quality. Trilinear optimization is off. You can read the details below. Threaded optimization, turn this on to auto. This does change the way the game renders certain textures. I just let it decide all by itself what it wants to do with that. You can get higher performance by turning uh, this on, but I'd rather have my computer determine what's best at the time. Triple buffering is off. Vertical sync is off. Virtual reality pre-rendered frames, one and virtual reality variable rate super sampling is off. Most people have this off and at one by default. 
So then once you've had these settings changed, hit apply, and this will help make the game as clear as possible. It is a big difference. Many people who modified the engine files used to just add a bit to the sharpening and fix the anti-aliasing, which is what became part of the community AA anti-aliasing. But I feel like the current community anti-aliasing uses way more GPU power than what the old modified engine files were using, um, like the temporal AA settings and sharpness and and whatever. But this is what we have to deal with with the game. So this is kind of the way around it to clear things up. Basically, this is going to achieve the same results that we had in update eight, modifying the engine file. So next, we're going to go down to configure surround and physics. Make sure this is set to your GPU. Your physics settings is set to your GPU. Pretty simple. All right, so once you're done changing your physics settings, we're going to go to change resolution. We're going to make sure that your monitor's refresh rate is set to the highest possible. Make sure your resolution is your native resolution. And now down here, I am using the NVIDIA color settings, RGB format, standard definition, full output dynamic range. If you were to use HDR, you'd have to, you know, if you're using your monitor, you may see that HDR is grayed out and you want to know how to turn it on. This is how you do it. You would go to Windows, type HDR, hit enter, and select your monitor. And you will see the option for HDR. You can turn HDR on. And then once you do that, you can scroll down below and you'll see this slider up here. I would recommend starting at 80 as far as your brightness balance goes. And go from there. For me, in order to use full HDR 10, I need to lower the resolution down to 120. Once I lower the resolution down to 120, my monitor will allow me to use HDR 10. So basically to do that, we would go, as soon as my computer stops freaking out, we would go to output color format, select 444, which gives every pixel in your monitor color. We will select 10 and we will hit apply. Click yes, and there we go. In your monitor settings, HDR will now be available to turn on. Use the settings inside your monitor settings to determine the best level of HDR. My monitor gives me like an entertainment version of HDR and then gives me a gaming version of HDR. I don't see really the point of using HDR when playing Hell Let Loose, um, but do what you want. It does look great. But I, I just don't feel it's needed in this level of a World War II game that doesn't really have an exceptional color palette to the game. So basically for me, I am going to revert back. Turn HDR off. We're going to X off of that. For me, I'm going to go back to 8. And then I'm going to go back to RGB full. Click yes. All right. Next up, we're going to go to adjust des desktop color settings. Or I'm sorry, size and position. Here are my settings for scaling is set to aspect ratio. You can select no scaling as well. Um, I, either one should be just fine. What you do want to make sure, though, is that the scaling is performed on the display. Even the best GPUs today will not have as good of display scaling as your monitor will have. Um, and you will notice a huge hit in latency if you allow your GPU to do the scaling. So next up, we're going to go to set up G-Sync. If you don't already have this, um, everybody kind of plays the game, hell let loose, in uh, windowed mode. It seems to help with 
performance issues, especially if you alt tab out of the game a lot. So enable for windowed and full screen mode. All right, that is gonna be it for our graphic settings. Next up, what you're gonna wanna do is open Steam. You're gonna right click on Hell Let Loose, go to library your game, right click Hell Let Loose, and hit properties. You can see here, this is where I'm limiting the refresh rate of my monitor. I'm also using the DX12 modifier to force the game to run in DX12. The use all available cores modifier, that one is self-explanatory. If you have even a four core CPU, um, you will notice benefits by using this. Um, Hell Let Loose does run on one core hev more heavily than the others. This will help disperse that load across multiple cores. All right. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to launch the game. All right, once you have the game launched, we are gonna go to options. First, I'm gonna turn down all the sound. And then we're gonna go to video. And these are the settings I will be using here on forward, unless I find some magical setting we haven't discussed that ends up helping this game out tremendously. The main parts we're gonna focus on here is these settings down here. Um, when update eight was out, I used to run most of these at high and my view distance at epic specifically. But I will show you in just a little bit here um, what the difference in view distance from between epic and high really is. So texture quality, medium, shadow quality, low, anti-aliasing method is community TAA. The anti-aliasing quality, I used to even run this on high. It does give quite a bit of performance hit to the game, which is really unfortunate. Um, but the anti-aliasing quality, now I have set on medium. FX quality is medium. I didn't notice the difference between seeing fire come out of the end of people's guns between medium and high. Update 8, if you were to set this setting to medium, you wouldn't see any muzzle flash at all. Um, so having it on high was super important if you're trying to find enemies. I didn't notice that with this update between medium and high. View distance is high. The reason we have this is because even at 60 meters, as you'll see, foliage does not appear uh, when it's on high. Whereas when you have it on epic, foliage can sometimes appear where you wouldn't see it otherwise. So keep this on high. Most of your battle will be fought at closer distances anyways. And it just seems to not render so much foliage, which is clearly hindering the game at this point in time. Um, foliage quality. Keep this on medium. Some people like to play the game on epic. I wish the default settings of the game were at least on medium, high, or epic. Um, something that just didn't allow you to adjust foliage quality in the game would be an improvement. It doesn't need to be there. I think everybody for, you know, getting high kill deaths is probably playing with foliage quality on the lowest quality setting there is. The game does look a lot more lush when you have it on Epic. Post-processing quality, medium. This does affect the quality a tiny bit, but the FPS increase you get from keeping this as low as possible is all out better. SSAO off, motion blur off. So what we're gonna do, I'm, I'm gonna hit uh, apply settings and I'll fix the audio back here and we will go back into a game. For me personally, I like to use Carrington on the German side in the middle HQ to do all of my testing with. It is, it's not a map that runs great, and I noticed a lot of uh, 
FPS fluctuations in the headquarter spawn. So it's kind of a good area to run around and move around and check things out. So basically, I'm just going to go down to a blank server, anyone that's running Carrington Warfare. All right, so what you'll notice right away in the game is the clarity of objects, and we won't have any of those little white dots on everything that anti-aliasing can give you. So what we'll do is we'll select Germany, we'll go to a locked infantry. I do all my testing here in the center headquarter spawn. I try to run to that supply truck. This map doesn't run as well as some of the other maps, so it's a great one to test performance on. As you can see, the game looks really clear. Those graphic settings really change the way the game looks. Textures look nice. Doesn't look blurry or grainy. There's one thing I want to show you here, the difference between epic view distance and high view distance. Now what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be looking at what foliage disappears between the settings. Right now, I have my view distance set to epic, just as an example. Where we're going to be looking is these bushes right here. So I'll wait for that ping to go away. Keep your eye on that spot. And we're just going to simply change the settings to high. And look at, as you see, the bushes are gone. They're all gone. You can see enemies running right through there when they think they're hiding behind a tree. So that's clearly an issue. Um, I used to love epic view distance because I took quite a few long shots. Uh, but now I can just really see where the enemies are now. Um, being that foliage isn't rendering in. So I suggest keeping your view distance on high to give you the best tactical advantage of seeing where enemies are at. And that's it. That's all we have to do to improve the clarity and performance of Hell Let Loose by turning the video settings down to medium and allowing the graphics card to do all of the sharpening and removal of film grain work over the top of it. We've made the game look as clear as possible and it's just going to add to an overall more pleasurable experience to Hell Let Loose. One thing I can't speak highly enough about is a YouTuber named Adam X and his optimization Windows 10 guide. Open up your browser. You can go to Adam X's page and follow this guide on how to optimize Windows 10 for gaming and performance. This fix is unbelievable. It truly is. I really can't say enough good things about it. The input latency that you will notice is drastic. It is a drastic improvement. And the only thing you'll want to stay away from in this how-to is my NVIDIA graphics settings to clear up Hell Let Loose. If you use Atom settings, it's going to turn everything off in the NVIDIA 3D settings, which you know does help with input latency, but I really didn't notice a no noticeable difference by turning some features on. Atom X's fixes really turn off a bunch of Windows services you don't need. He's really done all the work for you, and it's as easy as dragging and dropping. Um, as we know, updates hurt gamers, and we want to stop that at all costs from happening, and Adam X's fix does that. So once you have all these settings changed, restart your computer, launch Hell Let Loose, and enjoy the game. I hope this helped. Um, if you experience any issues, I can try to help you as best as I can. Um, leave your comment down below, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks, guys.